Meron ka bang paboritong story? Story. Hmm, marami akong paboritong story. Maraming medium. Kailangan ba isang answer lang? Kahit anong story, ano ba yung pinaka-paborito mo? Hmm. In terms of novels, siguro Harry Potter. Harry Potter series. Aling part ng series na yun? Sige na. Lahat. Lahat. Lahat, Edy, 1 to 7. Bakit mo nagusto yung buong Harry Potter series? Hmm, kasi yun yung... Yun yung siguro yung first series na nabasa ko. Isa sa mga pinaka-first series na nabasa ko nung high school pa ako. At saka, maganda yung series eh. Talagang kung binabasa mo siya na feeling mo natatransport ka sa Harry Potter universe. Mm-hmm. Pero, di ba meron ka pa daw na panood na iba pang novels or series besides Harry Potter? Napanood? Ay, nabasa. Nabasa. <laughs> nabasa. Meron, meron. <laughs> um, bakit ano? Bakit Harry Potter pa din yung gusto mo? Siyempre, compared sa ibang works, like ngayari, second favorite ko, Percy Jackson series, iba pa rin yung Harry Potter universe. Iba pa rin yung Um, details na ginawa ng author doon sa universe niya. Napakadaming details na minsan kailangan ba, paulit-ulit mong basahin yung series para magets mo lahat. Ako, ilang beses ko na nabasa yung series, pero syempre, hindi ko pa rin alam lahat ng easter eggs. Oh. Okay. Meron ko bang favorite story? My favorite story is a book called Steelheart. Bakit mo nagustuhan yung Steelheart? Because it has sci-fi and fantasy, one of my favorite genres is fantasy. And the summary really got to me. It piqued my interest and I started reading it. What is your favorite movie and why do you like it? I'm the type who's into suspense or thriller movies. So to name one, I would pick the movie Gone Girl as one of my favorite Gone Girl is a psychological thriller film where the story revolves around a couple who were about to celebrate their fifth wedding anniversary when the woman suddenly went missing. There were a lot of twists and turns that would leave you guessing what's going to happen next, and it gets exciting as the everything unfolds in the end. Uh, my favorite movie is Shawshank Redemption. Uh, the reason I liked it because uh, the story is really nice. Um, it kind of... Uh, gives you a realistic feel to how how our judicial system works and even though uh, even though some you can be innocent but sometimes you can be you can be proven guilty even though you're not so um, it's a movie that's very realistic makes you realize that you can't judge someone based uh, Jason I mean you can't ju- judge someone uh, just based on the situation you have to know the whole story so that you can actually um, you can actually know whether that person is um, is innocent or not uh, it it's a it's a movie that has everything like uh, it's drama it's action it's suspense um, and I like it also because it's the first movie that uh, I've seen that really um, taught me taught me a lesson about life. Yeah. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Aaron Miguel Nang. Hello to you all, and I'm Zenish J. Lim Hoko. And today, we will be talking about a famous canonical author from the Philippines. So the author that we will be talking about is the one and only... NVM Gonzalez, also known as Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez, was a Filipino writer born on September 8, 1915 in Romblon, Philippines. He was born in a family of educators. His father, which is Vicente Gonzalez, is a school supervisor while his mother which is Pastora Madali Gonzalez, is a teacher. He wrote many novels. 
short stories, essays, and poems. He was only 16 years old when one of his poems, which is Guitarist, appeared in the Philippine magazine. In 1997, he was bestowed as the National Artist of the Philippines for Literature. Unfortunately, his life ended in November 28, 1999. And Pim Gonzalez is one of the Philippines' most famous authors. He's not only famous nationally, but also globally. He won a lot of awards from his works like the Jose Rizal Pro Patria Award, which he got in 1961 for the Bamboo Dancers. And second, he won second place in Carlos Palanca Memorial Award for Children of the Ash Cover Loan. He has a total of at least 37 awards. Some of these awards are the Philippine Centennial Award for Literature, which he got in 1998, the National Artist Award for Literature, which he got in 1997, the Asian Catholic Publishers Award in 1993, the City of Manila Medal of Honor in 1971, and many more. NVM Gonzalez made many works during his time period. Yet, the only works that we have read are The Tomato Game, The Bamboo Dancers, The Happiest Boy in the World, Children of the Ash Covered Loam, and the bread, of, the bread of Salt. To be honest, these five works are the only works that we are able to access online. However, The Bread of Salt was a requirement in one of my subjects one of our subjects, rather, to read it. The Tomato Game by NVM Gonzalez is written in an epistolary style. It's about the narrator, who is a lecturer in Transpacifica University, writing to his friend named Greg. In the story, the narrator tells how his friend Sophie, a so-called lawyer, and his modus operandi. On a Sunday morning, Sophie and the narrator went to a tomato farm. So, the narrator did not know why they were there. At first, the narrator thought that they were going to watch a cockfight. But later, they met an old man whom Sophie called him as Lolo. Lolo is planning to marry a young Filipino named Alice and planning to adopt a young boy named Toby. The old man also plans to let Toby study in a university. The narrator, who he does not know why he was there, quickly puzzled through why Sophie brought him there. It was because the old man was going to let Toby study in Trans-Pacific University and Sophie was planning to let the narrator help the old man to get Toby in. But the narrator insisted that he cannot because he's just a lecturer in trans Pacifica University. But Sophie insisted and said that the old man has already paid an $800 down payment for Toby's tuition fee. We can see that the narrator is not fine about this and he is quite angry, but he cannot do anything about this. Later in the story, when the narrator and Sophie left, Sophie said, something to the narrator that quote-unquote he said that I can't believe that he never met this young man before and that ended the story. The Tomato Game in my opinion is a very good story. It was short and it was simple and for me it was easy to understand and it is quite relatable to what is happening nowadays especially since in the Philippines there are a lot of OFWs and once their work visas are expired, they will be deported back to the Philippines. But some people does not want this to happen to them. That's why they marry American citizens for them to become an American citizen. And they will not be deported back to their home country. There is actually a Dennis area here in the Philippines named On the Winter Club which in their first few of episodes tell that uh, how the immigration process works and 
that there are a lot of Filipinos or immigrants there who are getting deported. That's why they switched to an option where they would marry a American citizen there and then they would later on divorce them. Just so they married those American citizens just for them to stay in that country longer and not be deported. The Children of the Ash Covered Loam is all about a little boy named Tara. In the beginning, his father came home with a carabao named Bokal and a surprise for Taran. Paolo gave his father a pig for Taran to take care of it. They made the deal if the pig produces many piglets, half of it would be Paolo's. Taran gave the pig a shelter and food to take care of it. One day, his family became very busy working in the kainin. His father traded his mother's camisa in exchange for a pullet. He used its blood for a ritual in the kainin. That night, there was a sudden heavy rain outside. Tia Orang went to their house to tend the mother's belly. During dinner, Tia Orang talked about evil spirits and other stuff. After that, they all went to bed, but Tarang was able to hear somehow a form of music from, from the rain. So he checked the form, but he stubbed his toe and then saw how life came out from the dark womb of the lad during that night. The point of view of the story is third person view and it took place in Malignandor. So it really showed how or what it what is it like to live in rural areas. There were just so many things that the story showed to the readers like how fathers are decision makers and mothers are hard working in the family and not to mention it also showed the system of the kaingin some old filipino beliefs and most of all the cycle of life the bamboo dancers by nvm gonzalez is about a young man named Ernie Rama, who is a Filipino sculptor and had a study grant in the United States. He is aloof and he does not like to get involved with other people. He only has a passive understanding of his Filipino roots and does not have a clear identity of himself. Later on in the story, Ernie received a chance to travel, so we took this and while on his journey, he met up with a lot of Philippine, other Filipinos who, like him, decided to leave the rural culture behind and pursue their ambitions in the West. While in the United States, he met an old acquaintance, a young girl, who works as a writer's fellowship in the United States. They later had an affair and stayed in a New York apartment for one week. Because of this, the girl questioned her morality and thus they decided to get married. But this relationship did not last long since later on in the story, the girl was engaged to a man named Herb Lane. Herb Lane is a writer and, is, and joined the USIS and has ambitions in the Far East. They decided to get married in the Philippines, but on their journey to the Philippines, Herb Lane died, which we did not know until later on in the story. And the young girl ended up in a hospital. Ernie then traveled to California because he received news that his brother was there. His brother was working as a residential physician in a local hospital. He, lay, he then had an affair with a young nurse there and but unlike the first relationship, this did not last long. And after that, Ernie decided to go back to Manila to see his wife and his children. He brought home with him many luxurious goods like a TV, tiles, and a car. 
But after a few days of being with his wife and his child, he notices that he does not have a functioning relationship with them anymore. Thus, he decided to go back to New York, where he met three other Filipinos, a young man and two young women, who d display public affection, like hugging and kissing in public. Ernie then traveled to Japan, where he learned about the Hiroshima bombing, but he was unmoved by this event, like the per kind of person he is. Later on, he gained the knowledge that her blade died in Taipei because he hit his fiance and then in a drunken brawl fight which and then later hit a young Chinese woman which caused a um, non-American demographic in China. The Bamboo Dancers by NDM Gonzalez, in my opinion, is not that good of a story for me. It's because it's very disoriented and it's very messy. It jumps from one scene to another. Suddenly, the author is in New York, then all of a sudden, he's in Japan for not that much of a reason. So that is why I don't really enjoy reading Bamboo Dancers that much. The Bread of Salt is all about a boy who likes eating the Bread of Salt or also known as the Panda Salt and he fell in love in a girl named Aida. He was having a hard time to confess his love to Aida since he was shy. One day, he joined Pizza's band because he thought that he could earn some money to buy Ida a special gift so as to confess his love to Ida and he also dreamt of becoming a violinist. One night they were going to perform in a surprise party. During the party the boy wandered around and saw a delicious food. Due to his temptation the boy ate one and wrapped some of it in several sheets of napkin, napkin paper. But then a packet slipped under his shirt and Ida saw what happened. Out of embarrassment, the boy walked out in the party and because of what happened, the boy just gave up hope on Ida to like him back. So he walked home together with Pete, but they passed by the bakers, so they ordered a pandasol, but the pandasol was not yet ready. The story took place in a small town or village, I guess. I really like it how the story is all about romance. You know, a typical person who is shy to confess his or her love to someone it was so sad for me that Ida was not able to like him back in the end. However, we're not sure about that since the point of view of the story is just first person view. So we don't know what Ida's thoughts are to the boy. But um, the boy just gave up hope, just like I said, on Ida to like him back. So. He just stopped confessing his love to her, so he really lost on hope. In my opinion, when you want to achieve something but just made a terrible mistake, you still shouldn't stop on achieving something that you want. Don't let one mistake lose you all hope. I really like it how the bread of salt or the yes the bread of salt the title itself symbolizes the whole story due to the boy's interest in eating pandasol she was able to meet Ida because he was able to cross her house whenever he buys a pandasol in the ending he bought a pandasol in the bakers, but the pandasol was not yet ready. That actually means that um, the boy was not yet 
ready to face reality or what he just did in the party. The Happiest Boy in the World by NVM Gonzalez is about a man named Julio who came from Tablas and settled in Baro. He was writing this letter to his landlord named Caponso. In this letter, he wants Caponso to accept his son to become a boarder so that he could attend school. Since Julio and his family were poor, they cannot really afford a land and instead rented one. And because of this, Jose, Julio's son, had to stop school. While writing this letter, Julio glanced around in their surroundings and saw his son. He was hesitant to write a letter to Caponso since so, because of some memories that he had with him. But since his son really liked to go back to school, he wrote this anyways. In the end, Julio um, sent the letter to Caponso and his son, curious on what his father written, decided to look at the letter. Once he looked at the letter, he saw that his how his father said to Caponso that he wants his son to go back to school. And because of this, Jose become the happiest boy in the world. In my opinion, The Happiest Boy in the World is a very touching and very inspiring story since it talks about a father who is willing to do anything so that his son could continue study and he could fulfill his dreams. And with the son knowing that his father would do anything just so that he could study again is very touching for me. NVM Gonzalez, in my opinion, is a very good author and is a phenomenal author because his works are very famous and they are very relatable to what is happening right now even though it is written in the 1950s 1940s it we can still relate a lot of it on what is happening to society nowadays it's fascinating that the works of NVM Gonzalez still does have a relevance in today's era for instance, the most obvious one would be the bread of salt. Until now, there are people just like the boy in the bread of salt who are afraid to confess to their crushes. Well, actually, for me, that is just a normal thing. But generally speaking, most people just give up on achieving something that they want when they just made a terrible mistake. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, this is Aaron Miguel Nang. And this is Zenish Jalim Hoko. Goodbye and thank you.